Okay. So, hey, everyone, it's the 1st of November, 2021. I'm with Walter here from Generative Objects. Hey, Walter, how are you doing? Hi, David. Very good, thank you. Hard so, beating hard, you know, from like the excitement of being here and feeling like there is so much I want to share uh, with you. I'm very, very, very grateful for being here with you. Wow, super. Yeah, and so for everyone, this is the first time Walter and I have actually met, I believe. Um, yes. And so Eric Bear introduced us and said it'd be perfect to for the community to learn a bit more about generative objects and what you're up to. So we're doing the meet and greet as well as the recording all at the same time. So it's mm -hmm. a pleasure to be here and look forward to look forward to learning more. Yeah, pleasure. Um, pleasure shared. Yes. Very yeah. exciting. And so, Walter, just a little bit of context. The ecosystem session is generally a bit of a free-flowing, free-form conversation. There's no intention to get anywhere with this. Uh, and the overall purpose of these sessions is just to build a little bit of content and discussion and um, artifacts around people who are involved in the whole chain ecosystem early on, their motivations, belief systems, what they're building, why that's important in the world. Um, just so you know, over over time, as the whole chain takes off and gets ad adopted in all sorts of scenarios, there's there's a lot more origin material um, and being able to really see and observe and connect to the original intentions of those who were building out building out solutions early on. So yeah, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you sent through a few things you'd like to cover, and I think they connect really, really well into what I've just shared. So um, why don't you start telling us a little bit about generative ob objects. You've written here, it's like the meta low-code platform and a description of how it improves conventional low-code platforms and why it matters. But maybe also to start with, yeah, what it is, um, if you've got any screenshots or anything, you can feel free to share your screen and sh show okay. us visuals as you're talking through, but like what it is, how it improves conventional low-code platforms and why it matters would be wonderful. Okay, thank you. Um, so Generative Object is a project that started 12 years ago, I wow. think more or less in 20, 20, uh, 2009. And by then, I was uh, I had been an engineer, software engineer, developer, and an architect, and uh, in many companies for 15 years. And during that time, I felt like I wanted to create something to go beyond what we were able to do in that time, uh, and and accelerate the creation of software because in software we always go through the same same reflection, same patterns, same pitfalls uh, all over again. So. How can we accelerate the creation of software? And so I created the local platform. So local didn't exist at that time in this naming. This is something that is really booming now. Yep. Uh, we see everyone is wanting to use local platforms. Uh, everybody is talking about them, and and uh, it's really like uh, really uh, in the mind now that this is something that we really really need to to um, to move faster. Um, and uh, since the beginning, I started without knowing this by then, a meta local platform. So it's going beyond the local platform um, uh, approach we see uh, around us. And I'll explain why. Because now, when, when you take a look, um, it's to be able to create any kind of software, but it's not fully true. It's not any kind of software. Every local platform is designed to create a certain kind of application. Yep. And yes, you can apply to many domains, to telecoms, to, to, um, to finance, to e-commerce, to whatever you want, but still a local platform today, as we see them, are designed to create a certain kind of application. And mainly when you see uh, all the big platforms uh, existing today, they are um, designed for creating data management applications. So for creating, for example, a tax management application, or a customer relationship, relationship application. So kind of application that are data centric and uh, used to manage data and collaborate on data. Yep. And or you have also more specific platforms for certain other kind of applications. So you can have, for example, a local platform designed for creating uh, BPM for business process management. So you have specific local platform, more generic local platform, but still targeting 
uh, certain kind of application. And beyond that, uh, the local platform we see today are targeting a certain uh, technology called stack. Yep. So usually when you take a platform is to generate Java code or .NET code, or uh, in many cases, it's built on a uh, runtime that you need to have running on your own servers to make the, uh, the, um, the application work. And, uh, um, and so basically it's mainly centralized applications. Yep. Local platform are designed for that. So the thing is like, if you want to um, go beyond that, target your own technology, for example, Holochain, uh, or create a different kind of application, um, you, you are really stuck pretty fast with the existing local platform. Got it. So, okay. yeah. So what generating object is, a, is, a, is bringing is the meta local uh, approach. So the meta local approach means that um, the, the platform, the local platform itself is uh, a local application. So interesting. So the idea is that um, you, you can see the meta local platform as a platform for creating local platforms, if you will. Wow. <laughs> so, and I will share. I will share a bit of um, of slides to 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 to, um, to put that in, that in diagrams to try to explain this because this is the chicken and egg uh, yep. inception uh, thing. So, let me share my screen. Okay. So can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, so here. In the middle, you have the, the Go uh, meta local platform, so generative objects. Go is generative objects. So this is the, the, the nickname of, um, of the platform to not be uh, confused with the language from Google. So the meta platform, how it works, it's, it's using a meta model and generation templates. So the meta model is the way you model your application, how you describe your application, what you want to create in conceptual ways that are not depending on the technology. So for example, for um, um, classical data-centric uh, application local platform, the concept would be the entities. So what are the concepts you want to integrate in your application? For example, if you create a custom relationship uh, management application, you will have the complex of customer, contract, orders, you would have connection between uh, everything. For example, a customer can be linked to many contracts, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep. So this is the meta model. So we ask the user to describe what they want to create. So what are the concepts they want to manipulate? What kind of screens they want to create? What are the business rules that they want to to uh, to model, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm, so this is yeah. the way you describe your application. Uh, and the generation templates, it's how you um, transform all the, how we want the platform to transform our conceptual model to an actual working application. So it's really actually the, the blueprint of the architecture we want to generate and how from, for example, the list of entities, we will create a, a table in a database and code to access the data and et cetera, et cetera. So this is how we translate from the functional model to the, to the actual application. Mm. So for example, the core meta model of Go, it's a meta model that is used to design data centric applications, management yeah. applications. And the generation templates are targeting of, um, um, a web front end, so uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, APIs, JSON, REST APIs to connect to uh, the backend, and the backend, uh, the templates that are the core templates are for generating .NET code, uh, targeting SQL database using an ORM so that you can target any kind of SQL uh, of SQL database like SQL Server, uh, Postgres, MySQL, etc. Yep. So, so the user will just connect to the meta local platform, design his application, click on a button, and we'll get a generated uh, application that you can use. Yep. 
So that's the basic uh, principle. And what we have here is what I said to you about the self-reflexiveness of the platform. So this is still the platform. We use the platform with a meta model that represents the platform itself to generate itself. Mm -hmm. So when we want to upgrade and, and evolve the platform, it's about, uh, sorry. Um, we just open the model of the platform itself inside the platform and we regenerate it. We, we, this, we upgrade it and we regenerate it. So this is kind of, this is the chicken and egg problem, but it, it took me uh, the first year of the project to actually manage to have this cycle done. So that was thought inside the platform from the beginning. Yeah, interesting. And then what is interesting here is that then we can use the also the game Go Meta local platform to actually design a local platform that we want to create because we want to, to model a different kind of applications. So here we use the Go Meta local platform to generate uh, our own uh, local platform. Yep. So if I take an example, if you want to have a, a local platform for designing and generating surveys, something like Google Form, for example, if you want to create a Google Form from inside a data-driven um, local platform, it's, it's kind of cumbersome. It's not really designed for it. But here we can create a new uh, local platform with a new meta model that will be uh, representing surveys. So for example, the concept will not be entities and relationship between entities and forms. And it will be questions, sections, different type, type of questions and etc. So that we create a language, the, the meta model can be seen as a, as a language, a high level language, we create a language for our end user then to be able to use this language to create surveys, for example. And here, the generation templates, we could, for example, create a gener generation templates to target Holochain and create a distributed survey generator. So this is how we can create a full brand new local platform as, as well as for the kind of application we want to create, the, the language we want to create, and what uh, technological stack we want to generate on. That, that, that makes sense or yeah. because I, it, it can be a bit like, uh, and then here, then we can uh, then use our new generated local platform to create surveys, for, for instance, and give access to these to our end users. Okay, okay, okay. So the application model creates a platform which then generates, so, okay, so, Hmm. I'm just trying to work out maybe one thing I haven't quite grokked is the application model to the low code platform. In other words, anytime you want to create a low code application, you actually generate the platform to create the application or that platform persists and looks the same every time. No, we generate actually a full new platform. Amazing to generate the application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. That's, the, that's, yeah, that's one of the big differentiators. I, I completely understand. Yes, and I will stop the sharing. So, and it can look the same because you could reuse what was used in the original platform as a way to, because then you have an interface where it can uh, create your new application using this new language. Yep. So you can reuse the same designs and, and, and layouts of pages and everything, but you can create a full new uh, user interface and experience. Yeah, my, okay. you, can, you could create a fully, for instance, a fully, um, non-visual interface potentially so you could create a platform that is a set of apis that can be used by a high uh, artificial intelligence uh, engine for example to directly use the engine to create something so everything is open so the idea is like with this approach you actually can build anything interesting and um Yes, so that this is the beauty of it. And um, I, I wanted to say something else, but I, I, I'm lost with my own thoughts. <laughs> um, yes, yes, basically, I, I think I will keep it uh, simple and, and, and stay here for now. In the okay, fair thing. No, yeah, so tell me a little bit more about your journey then, because obviously it's a really big journey to be here. Um, creating generative ob objects while you're open sourcing it about while you're open sourcing it so yeah 
and give you share a little bit more of your intention and journey that'd be great yes mm -hmm. yes so when i started back then back uh, in 2009 uh, i really had this call to create this technology it was really very uh, very obvious for me that this is what i wanted to create and since the beginning uh, i had this uh, i this this um, calling and this will to create something um, not just for business and making profit or but really creating something to share with the world and to co-create something beautiful with others I really had this feeling that okay I, I need I want to create something that can change the world and not knowing how <laughs> yep. but I was like not the, what I wanted to do and open sourcing was already in my mind back then, but I was in the old way of thinking like, oh, yes, but uh, I might lose my technology or I cannot make money or make a living out of open sourcing. I need to work with big companies and corporates because they have the money. And then when I have more money, I can do something. So all these very limiting beliefs I had made me feel, made me create a classical company where I was actually building a closed uh, source platform, yet generating open source code because yeah. from the beginning, the object is generating human quality code. So for our customers, even being a, a starting company, it was uh, good for them to work with us because they um, they reviewed the code because it was it was corporate. They reviewed the code, the security, the, the architecture, and everything, and validated that yes, they could. Uh, work with the code without the platform in, in the long run. So, so I created a um, classical company uh, from my limiting beliefs and went on and uh, uh, went up to an eight people team. So we were like designing the platform and creating a um, project for our customers, uh, corporates in France. And then uh, I think it was two years ago, I started to feel like, no, I'm not enjoying I'm not enjoying what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm creating with the expectation of a destination far away, <laughs> but was not really happy in what I was doing. And uh, and I, I like this picture I have behind me. I, I yeah. made the reflection very, like last week that this is a beautiful path. And my what I want to do now is my life in my life is to enjoy the journey. So wherever I am in the path. I'm happy because I can enjoy the view. I can feel good about what I'm doing now. And there is no need for a destination. And then there might be a beautiful outcome, but I can already be in my joy and my uh, truth right now. So I decided to just let go my full team uh, to realign with myself. Uh, the customer project, I found a partner in France um, a software company who are actually dealing with the customers now. So I'm just providing the support on the platform so that I um, I could actually come, come go back to the coding because I was a CEO for several, for many years and I was not coding anymore. And this is my baby somehow. I'm channeling it in a way. So it's like I had to go back there to actually um, um to actually go back to development and create what I wanted to create. Yeah. So and and open sources, open sourcing was evident for me at that time. It's like no, it's about sharing with others. It's about collaborating with like-minded people and, and projects. So it's about yes, fully open sourcing and and uh, being open to receive connections that are really making sense for me now. And this is when. Um, uh, yes, nice, beautiful connections started to happen. So, I, uh, all the chain came to my awareness like uh, three years ago in the in the beautiful event when I was doing some personal development and connecting to other people. Who were like here to open to others and to to see life in a different ways. So uh, I got in touch with Olochain from, from there and still is taken it still then and discovered the decentralized world and all the beautiful promises we have around this. And uh, yes, and connected to, um, I had a call like uh, two and a half years ago, maybe with Arthur. So we shared about this and I was completely new in blockchain technologies and well, I know Olochain is not blockchain. So he was speaking a language I didn't fully understand, <laughs> but still I felt the energy of, yes, I want to be part of that too. I feel like there is here something that uh, I could bring my contribution. And what I feel about my contribution is 
bringing the tools to accelerate the creation of ecosystems on given technologies that make sense. So it's like it's not like to to be part of developing a technology like blockchains, for example. It's like, hey, I love what you're doing here. We can create a local platform that I can accelerate the creation of applications. Because what I believe is like, if you want to have a, a new technology to spread, we need we need adoption. We need we need application. We need we we need uh, to attract people because they will feel like, wow, there is a lot going on there. I can find, for example, all what I need as application in the decentralized world, so I will go there. Because if it's only a few applications, it's pretty hard to move from the old to the new. So my, my job here, my uh, expertise and skills are here to bring accelerators to projects. So when you were running your business and you were transitioning, what did you see or what did you like believe was possible in the world that really powered that shift inside you? Because okay. mm. Mm. Yeah, so thank you for the question. Makes sense. So uh, two things. One thing is I see the power of local technology, especially with the, this meta approach that makes it very versatile and very... Uh, evolutive, so it can go everywhere. And I really believe that this is a technology that needs to be available to everyone. So it's a technology that can empower, every, empower everyone to actually create. Yep. Because, I mean, the evolution of internet is amazing. You know, it's like today we are all uh, using services on the internet, communicating, creating content, consuming content. I'm seeing my 90 years old grandmother chatting with my father. Uh, that's like 10 years back would be like, no, this will never happen. Yeah. So yeah. for me, the natural evolution is like tomorrow, we will not be only consuming services, we will create them yes. in a collaborative yeah. way. Yeah. So I envision a technology like generative object as being a founding technology that can be used in a collaborative way for all of us to be empowered to create the application we need. Yeah. No sense. And I already thought about centralization, not at the infrastructure level, but more at the organization, organizational level that I would I yep. already saw from the beginning, how we can all together co-create the tools that then belong to, to everyone, to there is no centralized uh, power. So for me, the, the, what I see, what I foresee is to create a Wikipedia for applications. Yep. Same way we collaborate on content today, tomorrow we collaborate on creating our social network, our worldwide social network, um, or uh, our community social network. It doesn't have to be global necessarily, but we are empowered as people, uh, as a collective, to create whatever we feel like we want to create. Yeah, it makes total, it's, yeah, complete sense. Okay, so when you're seeing that, you're like, how could I have a centralized organization when I'm trying to bring this into the world? In some ways, yeah, like you can have, you know, this company service a provide the platform, service a platform, but from a technology perspective, where you sit, you need to be effectively operating in a more decentralized way to bring it. You have to be in harmony with how this has been built, brought into existence. Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. I don't see... I'm not creating a company. I well, still yeah. have one, but it's more like a, yeah, an administrative one. But I'm not creating a new company. I'm not uh, hiring people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is we connect with each other and create together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. um, yes, definitely. Um, this is the idea. And, um, and what I want to do, really, this is my calling. And when I see Holochain, well, it brings the infrastructure to make this happen in a much much uh, uh, sense, uh, sensible way yep. than relying on the internet the way it is now and having servers and having uh, all, even at the infrastructure level, you have the ISVs and, uh, no, the ISVs, the service providers, and there is centralization in the internet itself and in just the fact of having a server and a data center. So, well, bringing all of chain 
um, technology in the picture makes the world think like, whoa, what if by using Go, we, we create a new generation template uh, pipelines that target total chain? Since generator object, the local platform itself is self-reflective, then in theory, we are capable of generating a fully decentralized local platform. Even the platform itself becomes like spread on all the, the single people nodes and everything and, and becomes decentralized. Mm. So that, that feels like, well, um, my, probably it will not happen in, in the next month or, or year, but that's something that definitely uh, would be uh, feeling very, very uh, sensitive to go to. And anyway, since there is this reflective meta approach, the beauty of it is that it will evolve wherever, because we cannot even anticipate what will be the, the technologies of the future and there will be probably more innovations and everything. And the beauty is that all the application you, you, you model, since the platform can can smoothly evolve and, and, and uh, uh, integrate new technologies, all your application models, they don't change because you have the same need of sending a message to someone or these kind of things. So you can, the application will follow. All the, the, the ecosystem of application you build will just follow the flow and evolve with the technology. Whereas today, when there is a technical change, we have to rebuild everything. And now that could be over. Yep, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I've got. It's a lot to daydream. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I just I started daydreaming about. Okay, well, this is fantastic. Why don't I also get Eric from Junto, and like Nico, who's doing perspectivism, and Adam. And then maybe the Kazuna guys and you all on an ecosystem session and we can talk because in a way, mm -hmm. meta tool or platform generation is a subject that each of you are examining. So like, oh, then I started thinking, well, okay, what are models for that? What are operating models for that? What are business models for that? And get you guys to jump in. So, um, um, hmm. yes, great. Yeah, that would be amazing. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yes, and then when you talk about business models, <laughs> about how I would operate as a company in such a way. Uh, I, in a way, uh, I, I almost want to say, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not making my mind about, and this is not my thing to think of business model. I just feel like I need to bring what I'm here for, what is my expertise, and connect to people, and together we co-create whatever we want to create. Yep. And I really... Um, believe that it will not be a business model that is uh, what we know today. It will yep. probably be, be uh, connected to different kind of currencies that yes. are not business money, that are valuing other things um, uh, that we can uh, have so beautiful exchange all together and uh, bring value to not just one individual or one group of individuals, but to the whole collective. So, yep. That, that's what I'm believing. And yet this is also an, a huge topic. I can't feel it in my body. And yet this is not me who will create that part of how that would work. I'm bringing the technology and connecting to people who want to create that so that together we, we, we actually build that. That's so interesting. Yep. Oh, super interesting. Okay. I definitely, yeah. All right. So... <sighs> Yeah, so where are you at with the product and creating this and, and also, you know, for, for the whole chain ecosystem? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the product itself is production really because it's used uh, for uh, maybe 20 customers uh, until now, uh, living about well, the product are running and for a big scale application also. Uh, so the, the platform is, is working, is ready. Uh, not in the meta uh, local approach, more in the classical approach, using Go as a local platform for creating data-driven application. What I've done, uh, what I've improved is I have uh, 
the self reflectiveness was here from the start, but now what I've done is I've actually implemented a way to really easily create a new local platform from both. So I've actually met uh, the meta local approach to reality. Wow. So, and that's that's ready, and I will apply it in. A, we can talk about this later on a real project in the months to come. Amazing, and is this something you can share? Like we can do a demo of, or something like that. Or I guess, I guess if you you maybe what we could do is as you're applying it to the project, we could have a series of sessions where you could show how you're applying it. Would that be cool? Yes, that would be cool. Yeah, amazing. Yes. Okay, that would be too much for today, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. No, I, I agree. And the open sourcing. Uh, it's it's uh, oh just uh, it's not fully it's not open source publicly now because I'm I'm alone now so we need support so anyone with listening to this and have technical skills or even like uh, just on the documentation base want to support that's really welcome because I want to open source with enough documentation and and test and and set up procedures and everything so that uh, using it be, is uh, is uh, straightforward otherwise it will block people to just have bad experiences yep. and also create a, a hosted version of it so if you don't want to set up the technology it's going to a website create an account and having an instance ready to use because the, the platform itself integrates everything <clears throat> around the generated code but also deploying to the servers giving access to it so it's fully uh, it's fully uh, uh, integrate the experience from A to Z for creating an application. It sounds like a dream. And, uh, and it pushes everything to Git. So if you're a developer and you want to extend the code, because there is the local part, so you can still add code to um, <clears throat> to the platform. It's uh, you pull from Git, you commit your changes, and then you push back, and it's integrated in the generation pipeline. So. Uh, it's a kickstart is to just uh, instantiate the platform, start using it, and then potentially create your own um, setup on your machine. But uh, this is all that, that I want to put in place before fully open sourcing. And in the meantime, everybody who is interested in the project and want to jump in uh, ahead of time, ahead of the final open sourcing, I give access to the to the repository structure and 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 uh, so it's already already open somehow. But I want to manage that. Okay, um, the experience for them for more people who would come and that I would not have time to support directly in the yep. moment. Yep. So I'm already opening to uh, the, yeah. I'm welcoming anyone who is interested to really dig, dig into to to contact me and give access to the whole uh, repository. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, and have you been you've been, you've connected with various people across the Holochain ecosystem for that already? Yes, yes, yes. So I've I've, I've uh, followed I've uh, seen all the um, local zone uh, videos. Yep, that yep, were yep. Done. <laughs> and uh, that was amazing. So I contacted Guillaume then, and I mean the, um, uh, to really offer hey, here are the tools that I can bring here to actually create a local platform for Holochain. Amazing. Because if you want to create, because all the existing local local platform being so closed in what you can do, makes for a project like Holochain no other choice than creating your own uh, local platform. Yep. yep, yep, yep. And if you want to create a full fledged local platform, it takes years. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was twelve years in the making with eight people at the, at the peak. So. This is why I'm saying, hey, you want to create your own local platform? Poof, here is the platform to create your local platform. Yeah, okay, amazing. And, and it would um, be so fun yeah. to dig into this over time with a use case and just see see how it works. And wow, this is, okay. Yeah. The use case is already here, I will share that. Yeah, okay, but well, what's, what's, the, what's the use case then? Tell me, tell yeah. me. Just to finish about where I am, oh, okay. I'm putting the, the dev camp. It's, yeah. it's actually ongoing now. So I'm yeah. learning more about all the chain, how it works. And yeah, and I already can see, oh, okay, well, well, we can generate code for all the chain yep. using the existing meta model for data centric applications. So my goal is after the, the all the chain dev camp is to uh, create a first version of uh, all the chain uh, local platform using Go so that uh, it can be showcased. Oh, okay, we take. We want to manage customers and contracts and orders. So we have everything already in the platform to model this kind of application. Or can I uh, create a, 
all the chain template pipeline so that we generate that on the chain. Yep. And I already see this happening because I see, okay, it's, it's feasible. So the, this is to do a first showcase there because then probably to create a full pipeline of generation templates for all the chain, yep. uh, that would be uh, something open to the all the chain developer uh, group so that uh, I'm, I'm not the one writing all the templates. Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah. because I'm not the expert in Holo chain, so I can do so much as starting and, and showcasing how, how it works. So that then, if it gets interest and we see the value of it, others can just come in and, and, and add everything that is needed to really fine tune to all the specificities of Holo chain. This is the idea. Okay. Well, hopefully, with this call out, there'll, there'll be some real interest. Mm. And uh, yes, yes, there is already uh, excitement in, in several people in the team uh, shared in, in the dev camp with them and yeah. everything. And so, hey, let's see how, how it's going. Sure. GM is working on the compository. I don't remember the name. And we talk about this and it's it's just two different approaches. Yeah. It's complementary because the, the compository is how we can have pre-built modules that someone can reuse and plug in and create an application from that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's a it's a, an approach that is it's the easier approach for a yeah, user. And it's not technical. It's like oh, just take blocks and compose, and that's already very powerful. Yep. And generative objects, the full local platform is like how oh, can I actually model create all these modules, model them, and automatically generate code for these modules. Yep. So. So yeah, and the two can can be like very complementary in this sense. Okay, I got a text scam. What else do you want to share with it? That is a lot. What else do you want to share? Um, yes. So this specific use case I was talking to you about. Yes. Real case. So this is again for me the magic of okay being connected to my tools and what I want to do here and my joy that brings beautiful connection. And out of nowhere, uh, I connected with uh, Catherine and, and Stephen. Amazing. And help them. Um, and uh, that's an amazing, beautiful connection because I'm connecting with two beautiful beings here uh, who are doing an amazing project. Uh, both of them are there. Well, and Catherine is her life of uh, as a doctor and all the research she did and and all yep. the work she and all, all the, the the framework she she created for for helping people to take sovereign sovereignty and ownership of their own health journey. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And leaving out all the dependencies to others and being able to know what they need and ask for help and create their own journey for healing and on their own data, if they participate to what, what she's creating about gathering data and guiding them in their journey. So, and why uh, they are interested in connecting to our chain to actually make sure that we can have a framework, uh, an infrastructure where people can own their data. And then there can be even a currency about what I own as a value. The support I give to others as a value. We can even like, put the currency on top of kindness or this kind of, uh, so this is the part of, of Stephen who has like amazing uh, mind and, and so amazing idea about how to do that. Yep. So, so and uh, there is a first survey, uh, which is the food is a medicine to be ready to actually guide people through. And we will create this with generative objects. Amazing. So when I was saying one, <laughs> that, and that's funny because I wrote an article for um, for an online magazine, and I thought that okay, a use case for creating a new local platform would be to create a local platform for making surveys. <clears throat> and then I connected to them, and their need is to have a survey that that's going much beyond uh, Google Form or whatever you find because it's a very more complex uh, survey with really complex data behind, and in a way that can be decentralized, open source, etc. So. That's just the magic of what happens when, when I believe when we are aligned, it's really calling the right connections. So it feels like it's not feeling, it's not feeling like a working 
context is feeling like, whoa, we are friends sharing values and and dreams about how life could be, how the world could be. And hey, we can support each other and bring each of our peace. So I'm so happy and grateful I can actually support them in bringing to life this survey generator. And the food is medicine as the first survey that will, uh, that will um, uh, birth. And it's already creating a first brick of the new because everyone is using Google Form for a reason. It's like, hey, come on, guys, here we have a fully decentralized open source uh, version of Google Form that is um, just uh, available here. Because yeah. I believe that there is a need to create, recreate all the bricks of uh, all the services that are already existing. Or even more, it's like, it's like because this is linked to the old, it's like maybe to find, okay, that maybe the application we're using today and the services we're using is not really what we need. Yeah. So, so we will even go beyond, um, um, out of the box and we feel like, oh, all these services were based on profit. So there was an intention there and we are connected by using them to this intention. So how can we disconnect from that and create from a new place? But that's another topic. So there is this, this uh, beautiful meeting point. So the idea is to create with Go um, a local platform for creating surveys. And from this one, creating the food is missing survey in a centralized way, because this is what we have today. And then uh, when the pipeline for, um, for all the chain is ready, the template generation pipeline, is to then click a button to, okay, now we don't generate on the central database, now we generate on all the chain. Yeah, okay. So, uh, because this is really uh, something really that they want to, to do, and I understand that, and I, I'm, I'm supporting that. So this is a real case scenario uh, that can bring um, the MetaLocode approach and the integration with the Holo case, uh, Holo chain as a real showcase on the real project that I believe what, in what they're doing, and they have already like all the connections and everything to make it like an impactful project. Yep. So this is the plan. Yep. Amazing. Anything else we're going to share today? <laughs> no, I, I'm, uh, except that I feel like, like, uh, like movement in my belly here, like from anticipation, because there is this part of me like it's like, no, I want this to happen now, now, you know. <laughs> So I feel the, the anticipation and the excitement yep. uh, of uh, all of this, and and part of me believing that that's not even that's not happening. This is not true. Yeah. <laughs> as magic as it feels, you know, like all these connections and and uh, and synchronicities and and things. So um, yes, yeah, it sounds incredible. I mean, I'm I can't wait to see it in action. So there's a few actions for me. Um, I messaged Guillaume. I also want to put something in the chat and see if people want to connect over sort of meta platforms and business models. And then, yeah, I can't wait when you're ready with the, you know, with the health commons project and an example of what you guys are working on from this with these, the decentralized survey slash forms and being able to see how that's all generated. And maybe we can get uh, yes. Catherine and Stephen on together as well. I haven't, I haven't had an update with those guys for a while. Um, they were on, they were on last year, Health, Health Commons. So, like, yeah, sounds like we've got a lot to talk about. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Walter. Any final thank words? Um, no. Yeah. And just I feel like I was like so much excited. I was really happy in my head about sharing all of this and. Yeah, just like uh, I just feel like you're just breathing and whew, and being here back in my body. <laughs> and um, yes, this, uh, this is incredible time for me. It feels in the war in general. Yeah. Uh, despite all the the craziness and insanity that's happening, and it's just that it's so much like there. It's so much uh, for me. Uh, just a sign that something is already also happening in the other direction, that there is, there, there is this contrast. It feels like it's really a very exciting time with all the challenges that we have, uh, but also all so, so, so much beautiful opportunities and the technologies are already here. Yeah. It's more about how can we really connect to each other 
go out of the ego about, oh, yeah, no, but that's my part or whatever, uh, which I have myself <laughs> uh, uh, about how we can actually build together and find and being efficient in that because the, the for me, the challenge is how we can synchronize and connect to each other and actually build together yeah. in a very efficient way and not losing years of uh, not meeting. You know, yeah. the meeting point, where is the meeting point that will make us uh, grow together? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Amazing. I look forward to meeting again soon. Thank you very much, David. It was a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, and you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Yeah, Walter from Generative Objects, and look forward to yeah, look forward to the ongoing conversation. Yes. All right, super.